<laughs> Ruby disposable. This is an Indica. Ninety-seven percent thousand milligrams. Barry White. That's the name of it. It's pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. It looks like a, a jewel, but it's just. It's the real deal. Like, what is going on, guys? Welcome to a brand new vi video. Welcome back to the channel. It's Dev. We're here. The Boys. Season 2, Episode 4. Last on. What happened? Well. A lot of shit happened. The new chick. Uh, in the 7. I kind of forgot her name already. She's a bitch. She's racist. You know. Did a bunch of bad things. Kamiko's brother is dead now. That's fucked. And then... Yeah. Everything looked good on the news, though. They all looked... They all looked fine and dandy. Nothing looked bad whatsoever. Which... To them, I guess, good job for, for covering it up. But it's fucked. It's a fucked scenario. It's a fucked situation. It really is. Bears won. Even though this is a Julius Peppers jersey, the Bears won. Uh, a very ugly win. Very ugly, ugly win against the Houston Texans. But nonetheless, regardless of the passing game, the running game has was the best it's ever looked since like 1984 with Walter Payton and those boys. Like 200 and what, 70 yards rushing. Defense played decently well. They, they let a couple of big passing plays and... Shit like that happen. But Eddie Jackson, back in form. Roquan Smith, pay that man. Let's get into the boys, though. No distractions. We need to see what's going on in the world. In three, two, one. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, I was just... Frenchie, what are you... Frenchie, what are you doing, pal? Shouting up and down the hallways at Vaught, and you know what they're doing to stop another attack? Jack <laughs> Let's show Vaught what they have to do. Tomorrow morning, Vaught Square. Be your own hero. Make your I am counting on you to show us the way. Don't let me down. Holy shit, dude. I don't like her, that's for sure. I Probably doppelganger. Are you thirsty? The milkers. <laughs> the milkers. No. Uh, no. Mm. We're not going to be doing that. No. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm sorry. We're not doing that! <laughs> okay. That's something sad as fuck, dude. Sorry's not an option. We can't have anonymous skull exploding assassins walking around. But if they hit the speaker next, or the president? Imagine. <laughs> that would be fucked. You mentioned that before. Second tier suit. Active in the 70s. She was all over Susan's private server. Get Marvin to talk to this Liberty. Address on the back, North Carolina. Liberty. Okay. I found Becca. Or at least our best guess where she is. Bought facility, armed to the teeth. Won't be easy. Hey! <laughs> you get disrespected over and over and over. That's what happens. I mean, how much shit? True Sigma to... males right here. Holy Everybody shit. Everybody respects you. Fucking terrorist was my save, not hers. Uh, he's just worried about the fame and glory. Very hard not to take it personally. Oh, I know. I know. Shh. <laughs> oh. Change back. Change back. I'm sorry. I can only hold a 
safe for so long before it really hurts. I love you. I love you. You're the most powerful man in the whole wide world. And then Storming it off the books. That was extremely uncomfortable. I did not like that. You begged me to spare your life. Mm. He failed me. What are you talking about? No more lies. Fuck. You go ahead and scream. Much as you want. Fuck. Am I lying? <laughs> Good job, Starlight. Oh my goodness. That was intense. Um, do you mean William Butcher? <laughs> Here you go. I'll keep you posted when we find them. Or I can look right now. <laughs> Facial recognition search. Or you can join me. <laughs> I love that. I love Black Noir, man. Oh, God. Can we just chalk that up to a, a drunk dial? I, I'm okay, really. It's just... Uh, do you just mind, do you mind if we just don't talk about yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So why you don't send voicemails is the worst form of communication. If we're gonna go knock on some soup store, don't you think it makes a little bit of sense for us to have one of our own? Look, she's in rough shape. She needs this. How you doing? Cool. What's up, man? Oh shit! Oh no! Fitness outreach for toddlers. Apparently, they're getting obese. Well, shit! I fucking love fat kids. Use me. <laughs> I thought we were gonna have a strategy meeting. Hey, train, you're out. Oh. Great. Tribute concert. You're gonna hit the talk show circuit. You're you're gonna have your own reality show on Vought Plus. The Vought Plus. That baby you abort might be super. Oh my god. Even the pro-lifers jumped on the f- Hey, hey, this ain't the little Vegas road trip. <laughs> no date either. Just chill. Not your goddamn chaperone. <laughs> You two want a room? You and the donut. <laughs> this place had 31 flavors, and that man would taste each and every flavor every time we'd go up in there. There'd be a line all the way out the door. People would be mad as hell. When did he? 16 years ago. To fathers and sugar. To fathers and sugar. That was a really good scene. Shit, all over your skin. Here, got to use wet wipes. There you, go. you just carry these around with you? Damn right. Oh my god. Fuck, dude. What the hell? Aww. I couldn't call anybody. I can't imagine what it must have done to you. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. You've done nothing wrong. Wait here. I'll be back. Okay. Damn, dude.
Fuck. I still want to see you. Love is a leap of faith. <laughs> like, like my last boyfriend was obsessed with Ed Sheeran. What is going on yeah, here? I know, but he was obsessed. Shape of you, Galway girl, whole catalog. So he asked me to get one of these with him. Oh. Two weeks later, he broke up with me. Oh. <laughs> Please let nothing ruin this moment for Butcher. He's in. Tag here is so white. The numbers are rather startling. 92% of heroes are Caucasian, African American, 6%, Latin and Asian, each 1%. Why doesn't Vought want diversity? We have a gay hero. Really? Oh. Maeve here is a strong, proud lesbian with a beautiful girlfriend, Elena. Hispanic girlfriend. And I, for one, am so proud of her. Oh, is it so hard to believe that I want you two to be happy and in love? Honestly, Maeve, I am really, really happy for you. Oh, my God, dude, Anthony Starr. <laughs> what good is dredging all this stuff up now going to do? Honestly, we don't know. But we still need to hear it. So many times I tried. But a little black girl accusing a white superhero of murder in these parts? My brother Myron, he was driving. What's the trouble, ma'am? Get out! Hey! Your car was involved in a robbery tonight. Supposed to be a hero? I am a hero for killing a black piece of shit like you. Oh my God. That is what my brother's life was worth. Just $2,000. But y'all have got to promise me that you won't tell anybody that I sat here and I talked to you. Poor Butcher, man. Jesus, that was depressing. Oh, shit. Oh, sh I don't need anyone. But myself. Oh my fucking god, dude. What the fuck? This episode was was definitely one of the cringiest and more uncomfortable episodes there was of this show. And I will say, though, it has a good balance of happy moments, sad moments, like very emotional moments, cringe, uncomfortable moments, hilarious, whatever it may be. There was there was a lot of different things. I mean, oh my goodness, Stormfront's awful, and I'm pretty. I I would I I think she's Liberty. I think that could make sense. The voice did sound like her, honestly, and 
like of that scene with Liberty, which was really, really tough to watch. That was that was not okay. That that's awful. You know what I mean? That <laughs> yikes, dude. And what what they say that was like the seventies or whatever. So racist superheroes are more prevalent then than they are now. But you have obviously Homelander, who is definitely you know. He has a prejudice, but he doesn't show it. Stormfront has a pre 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 prejudice <laughs> and shows it, but also doesn't show it at the same time. She gets with the times, you know. Um, one of the main things about this episode was everybody just accepting that they're all alone, you know. I love the moments with with Becca and Billy, like, those were great, I was so happy for both of them, like, that was great, that was lovely, um, but then she came to the realization, was like, I, we can't do this, I mean, even if we get out, what's gonna stop anybody from, from coming after us, and even thinking about Ryan, and, like, what's gonna happen with the kid, like, I get Billy saying he's fucking a billion dollar piece of bought property, like, yeah, it's Homelander's kid, dude. <laughs> Becca's kid, too, and she obviously cares for him because she's raised him. I love the line about, like, if we were to leave, he would not be growing up with a mother. He would just turn into another Homelander, two more assholes in the world. You know, a lot of kids who are motherless and didn't have a, a good mother in their childhood and they they need that. They just turn into incels and... Just hate women. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just see women as objects. You know? Um, and fucking... Huey and Annie... Had a good moment... Had good moments as well. I mean... They got to hang out... You know, deal with this thing together... With Liberty and asking this lady... About what happened with her... And her brother... Which again was terrifying... Horrible, dude. It's so sad. Um, fucked up. But, and then, you know, they did their thing. They had a good time in the car. That car ride was, was fun, I guess. They were singing everything, but it was, but, but M.M. was just like, nah, turn that shit off. He was like, chill. And then you drive by a fucking Homelander, like, thing painting or whatever on the side of the road and fucking confederate flag on him like dude what the fuck that's so racist so it's justified on why on why mm you know did that why he turned it off he's like bro we gotta chill we gotta chill though <laughs> um i hope stormfront just bang bang dies someday she deserves it. She does not deserve a living. She goes out of her way and kills innocent people. I don't think Homelander most of the time will just look at somebody and kill them. Obviously not yet. We haven't seen it yet. We will see some Patrick Bateman type shit. We will see him being a full, fully grown, like, just tyrant. Like, he's going to take control and kill innocent people. Start playing race cards be more open like Stormfront or not open but like act like her when it comes to shit like that they're both fairly bad though and she even had fear in her her eyes when when Stormfront or uh, when Homelander was like literally about to kill her and Homelander just kind of figured out he he doesn't need anybody but himself and the only people kept keeping him in line are you know his fans you know what I mean the people who support him so the him realizing that he doesn't need that. If he's happy with himself, he's good. He will do what he needs to do that's good for him, nobody else. So I could definitely see him being a little more like yikes type shit. So Oh man. Crazy shit, dude. Crazy shit. This show is very uncomfortable. The scenes with Doppelganger, Doppelganger's dead. 
He's shocked. That was a very uncomfortable scene with Stillwell and literally himself. That was awful. <clears throat> that was really hard to watch. That was very uncomfortable. Wasn't a big fan of that. But see what more happens with Stormfront. We barely saw Frenchie this episode. Kimiko was literally about to go attack Stormfront, but Frenchie suddenly just popped up. He was like, stop, Monkyo, stop. Can't be doing that. I love um we us getting deep into into MM and what happened with him, especially as a kid and and growing up about his father, him talking about a disease that he's gonna be carrying down line to line, which could be a metaphor for something. I mean he, he, I never noticed it, but Annie pointed it out. It was like, he's a, he has extreme OCD. He wants everything to be as perfect as he possibly can, and he wants to control something that he can't necessarily control. Um, like his father with taking literally every single sample and figuring it out which one he wants the most out of like thirty one, and that could be the disease, the OCD. I mean, MM has the same thing and maybe his kids and at some point in your life that OCD could get you killed so who knows who knows but I did love more about MM's backstory and very good very good scenes um his father truly uh you know didn't like what's going on with Vought yeah I mean damn crazy shit a train looks to be maybe getting out of uh the seven kick kicked out for what looks to be was his name shockwave a train wasn't very happy about that not at all we'll see what he does i mean you can't stop the a train you just can't you just can't stop the a train baby <laughs> um but i mean we'll see what happens next like i said i love this episode one of, like i said one of the more uncomfortable ones kind of tough um, but the show's just it's great and a lot of the dialogue moments and just people talking back and forth it feels real it feels real and it feels very like natural and that's one thing I love about this show and the writing um, Black Noir knows that Butcher went to to see Becca most likely so I wonder if we'll have like a Black Noir versus uh, Butcher moment maybe who knows? That'll be interesting. We'll see if them and the boys get back together. All the boys are back together, so. We'll see what happens there. It could be interesting. Um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, hit the notification bell for daily videos every single day. Follow me on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and Instagram. All the social media is down in the description below, and we'll catch ya for another video. Goodbye!